Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems and this one looks already very interesting from the picture I've seen in the Discord submission here. This one's from Techsnick and it's called Dinos Space and the Aliens from Europa. I like the look, I like the look of this already so I'm going to go up, it's in the workshop, should be ready for us to rock and roll. So let's have a look at it here, where, where is it? That pic, look at that picture, he's custom made that, that's quite cool. I'll probably put it as the thumbnail actually. I like it when you guys see the custom pictures. They're always quite interesting, actually. So, let's check it out. What is going on in here? So, it says to me Europa, so I'm guessing this is some sort of solar system simulation. Okay, all right. Greetings, NG. I noticed you like my old solar system, so I made one myself. Ah, alternate reality. I do like alternate realities. Yeah, if you want bonus points from me, do an alternate reality solar system where everything's a little different. I quite like these. So, right. The sun itself. G-type main sequence star, centre of the solar system. However, this system's present time is set 60 zillion million years prior when it was a late Cretaceous period. So we're back in time in an alternate reality. I like this. Okay, so Mercury. So this is a young, it's to be a younger Mercury, a younger, a younger everything. So Mercury itself. Here it is. It's very red. A small hot dark red rock and the closest orbit into the sun. It's mainly used for mining purposes. Okay. Notice how it says mining. That means there's already some sort of civilization here. But if this is 55 million years ago, effectively there's no humans who know really going at this point. So, yeah, and it looks like Earth's uh, Earth's bio says so I just saw it in the side there. Right, next up we've got Venus. So even yet, yeah, 55 million years ago, it doesn't make a difference. Venus is still very hot. <laughs> a scorching hot world with a thin dusty ring formed from a quasi moon called Zuzi Zeus. That got crushed by the planet's gravity. Cloud cities float above the clouds high above. Interesting. So underneath, I'm guessing it is the usual Venus. Yes, okay. Got a little ring though. Nice. Okay. Cool. Next up, we got Earth. So since this is the Cretaceous, it wasn't humans that were spacefaring, but the uh, Primord. Pri Pri Primords? They evolved from a dinosaur called Trudons. Yeah, I know Trudons. Yeah, they're little, uh, they're little guys. Um, and have spread across the whole system along with uh, aqua ligos. I'm not, I don't know those. Uh, and the Earth's constants are a little different, of course. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Look. Oh, that's so cool. He's used like the lasers and stuff. I'm guessing. Oh yeah. He's like custom made. We need to get a full look at this. So he's custom. Oh yeah. Look at that. Australia. Look. Antarctica and Australia are still con like connected. Look how. Look how weird Asia looks. Yeah. Pacific Ocean. Also, you got the Americas. Not all fully together yet. Obviously, you can see South America. There's also lights on the Brazil area. So there's also some city lights going on here. The dinosaurs, the Trudons. Cool. You can see yeah, a bit of Brazil's lit up there. Okay. Or is it Brazil? Because maybe they named the countries different. <laughs> or maybe they didn't have countries for the dinosaurs. Okay. The Earth's constants are different. Right. So, here we go. So, what is this? So, ah. Okay. Chick Exelub. In our universe, this asteroid hit Earth and killed the dinos, but here the primals evolved just in time to stop it. Now the asteroid is slowly being mined away like a punishment for nearly ruining Earth. Okay. So the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs is there. Okay, you got the moon, the moon as usual, Luna, okay. Same old moon, got some lights on it. The dinosaurs are very advanced. <laughs> A white and grey marble decorating the night sky down on Earth. It's the inner system's hub of industry and trade. When the primords first started reaching into the space, Luna held their first colonies. Very cool. Okay. Nice. Like it so far. Next up, we've got Mars. Over here. So done a bit of work on Mars. A red and white rock orbiting next to the belt that separates the Rockies from the gas giants. It's the second most populated planet in the inner system being beaten by Earth. So Mars has got somewhat development on it. Ceres orbits Mars. Interesting. Once a dwarf planet in the Asher belt, now a capture moon of Mars. This world serves as a equivalent role of the moon in the sky, being a dozen in marble to look at. Very nice. No Phobos and Deimos if you look carefully there. They are not there. Next up we've got Jupiter. I guess in the... Four Galilean moons. Where is Io? I'm guessing that asteroid belt was Io. The uh, rings. The biggest planet in the protective linear world. It's the planet that holds the Coligo's homeworld, Europa. Long ago, there was a fourth major moon called Io that reached Jupiter's roof limit and crumbled into a giant ring. So that's what's left of Io. Okay, so you got Europa. So this is the home of the other species. Oh, they got a full kit around in Europa. Full ocean kit. Look at that. And, and the uh, little Dyson Sphere thing they got going on. 
to the home of the Aquiligos, a squid-like alien race that evolved in Europa's dark underground oceans. When the Primordials came in contact with them, they both signed a treaty that allowed Primordials to claim the surface of any moon in the outer system, while the Aquiligos got any underground um, oceans they likely have. Europa was later terraformed so the species could interact directly. Very cool. Look at that, got the full, full terraform Euro Europa kit around Europa. Look at that, got the, all those, well, I say the satellites all orbiting it. Two rings as well. Europa's proper sophisticated. That's really, that is a really cool custom, you like, you know, little, uh, I say Dyson sphere set up around it, all the satellites. That's really cool. Ganymede, looks to be the same old Ganymede, the largest moon. Only moon with magnetic fields, that's the same old Ganymede. Callisto, the third moon. And I say the third moon because Europa or Io is gone. The furthest major moon of Jupiter and the, uh, the most created object in the system. Least populated moon out of all of Jupiter's moons. Yep, so get on the list over there. Alright. So Saturn, going into the outer regions now. Match around Saturn? It looks like there is. A bland gas giant that's easy the forgettable planet. However, the moon system is quite unique. Notice there's no ring system around Saturn here. Because, you know, technically was this before the ring system existed? You know, who knows? But there it is. So, what is this? A shiny snow will orbit in Saturn. Thankfully, this moon didn't share the same fate as Io and happily orbits its parents. So, you know, effectively, this this moon could have been what became Saturn's rings, but in this reality, they, it didn't. And it was Io around Jupiter that became the ring system instead. So, there you go. This moon didn't orbit the same fate as Io and happily orbits its parent, which also stopped the formation of other moons in the Saturn system. So, that's why there's no Mimas and Enceladus. I think I didn't see... I don't think I saw those two. Um, the moon shares properties to Europa. Great for the Aquiligals. So this is basically, yeah, so, I, I see, yeah, Mimas, Enceladus, and Dio don't exist because this moon is here. So it goes straight to Rhea. Typical icy moon, similar in size. Oh, Mimas orbits, yeah, it's Mimas. What's left of, or what is Mimas? There's no, yeah, hasn't formed, does it? Sad moon called Mimas. So Mimas never formed in this system. Interesting. Titan, the second biggest moon in the system, atmosphere thicker than Earth, made of nitrogen and contains liquid methane on the surface. Much like its twin, Iapetus, this is a popular outer system destination for the uh, the prior mods here. Yeah, nice. Then got Iapetus over here. So this one's also got an atmosphere going on. Okay, nice methane on it. Like Titan, this atmosphere is made of nitrogen, but also a good bit thinner. Also like Titan, it has liquid methane, but Titan has only a few lakes, while Aptus has enough to form a whole ocean. So Aptus is pretty kitted out as well. Nice. Right, next up we head to Uranus now. Is it the same old Uranus? Here it is. Compared to, uh, was it, a tire, an ice giant on its side has somewhat thin but visible ice earring just as brilliant as Jupiter's. Okay, so a little more of a ring going on here. So we're heading straight to Miranda. Bit of attention for the uh, Uranian moons. A tiny grey ice moon with a huge crater for a major impact in the past. It's the second smallest moon only being beaten by Goblin. What's Goblin? What is Goblin? A bit aerial. Like Miranda, regular ice moon. Not the most interesting object yet. We've got Umbriel. Kids are there. Compared to the other moons, this one is pretty dark. Only for the of the light it receives. It's not very populated as we get to the outer edge of the solar system yet. Far out now. Uh, next up, we've got Titania, the largest of the moons. Unlike the other grey moons we've seen, this one breaks up a bit and streaks a blue similar to Ceres. Nice. And then Oberon, final Uranian moon. This moon strangely has huge deposits of amethyst on its surface. This makes it a great place to mine in the purple gemstone in order to make jewellery. Nice. Cool. Alright, now moving on to the mighty green Neptune by the looks of things. What's going on here? It is a green Neptune. <laughs> a wonderful green ice giant in the last planet before the Kuiper Belt. Unlike the Neptune of your universe, this one has a different composition in order to give it its green colour. So, uh, corrupted Neptune. There's Triton. Still has a Triton. The only major moon in Neptune like series with Mars. Triton was also a dwarf planet before being captured by Neptune. Cryovolcanism is common here. So, there's Triton. Excellent. Then the green Neptune. Notice how the background's green, so I bet this universe has more green elements. <laughs> there you go. Pluto. Pluto and Caron are still here. This world is nearly twice, as, twice the size of Earth. 
Whoa, it's a super Earth. Pluto is a super Earth. Full on planet here. And there's a nitrogen atmosphere more than four times the mass of Earth's atmosphere. This planet is easily the biggest rocky world going compared to the inner system. So Pluto is not a dwarf planet here. Charon as well. Also pretty big. Size of the moon. Standard ice body. So Pluto, a full on planet in the outer regions there. Then we're taking a big jump. We're heading to Minervera. Named after the Roman goddess of craft and wisdom. Minervera is an ice giant that got flung out by Jupiter 4.5 billion years ago. At this point, nobody lives all the way out there throughout the planet's time. It captures some moons and stones. This is your planet X, planet 9 world, yep. Sedna orbits it as a moon. A registered dwarf moon that's now the closest major object orbit in Minervera. And then lastly, we got that goblin that was mentioned earlier. I wonder if it's the goblin that was in our system, TG387. I don't know if it was that. Uh, a tiny dwarf planet captured by the gravity. Nice. So, got the outer, you got your planet 9. Now, I already spotted it in the background. It's obviously next here, Nemesis. And it is over there. Is that a big jump? That's a big jump from the sun. I mean, how far away is that? That's a, let's have a look. It's over a light year away, Nemesis. That's a light year there. 1.6, about 1.6 light years, roughly, Nemesis. Right. Okay, so Nemesis. Where are we, Nemesis? This is always an interesting theory, the Nemesis theory. What is going on? Whoa, I've crashed into something. Whoa, what's going on there? Nemesis. Whoa, I, I've completely crashed. Where are we, Nemesis? There he is. Aha! That's a very close gas giant. Whole other system. A red dwarf once partnered with the sun, but long ejected from developed its own small system. This is the Primald uh, Gwilingo's first interstellar colony. Okay, well, wow, they got really far then if they've already travelled here. There's Icarus, first of the planets. A hot, super puff Neptune world orbiting quite close to the parent star. This is the only planet that isn't rocky within this system. Very close to the star, and it's not that much smaller than the star as well. We've got a barrier centre next up. What's we got? Dera and Vertar here. One of the two planets in the binary. This grey and bluish rock was a somewhat spin CO2 or O2 atmosphere. Currently serves as the first colonized interstellar world. Nice. Then we have Vertar, an airless red rock, similar properties to Mars in terms of looks and composition. When this world is colonized, it will most likely become a mining world. Alrighty. So there's those two in the barrier center. Orbiting Nemesis. You must get a really big eclipse from that gas giant. Let's have a little bit of manual intervention here because i want to see that gas giant block the light from you put it like there there look at that that's a huge eclipse doesn't actually block the light but it's a huge look at that. massive that crosses star every few hours or days however long it takes yeah, roughly there have a little bit of a cheeky surface view i think let's have a little look down here oh there you go where are we so there it is. You have that block in your daylight. Definitely would dim it a bit, I think. There you go. Nice. So, look us up. Plonos. This world is better classified as a dwarf planet due to being 8 under 800 8 kilometers in radius. It contains huge deposits of water ice on its surface, which are great for supplying the colonists with water. There you go. Then we have Vulcan. Got some uh, interesting names in this one. Bear cold and lonely, this is the final planet of the Nemesis system. Scans show the planet was once volcanically active but has long since gone quiet. It also has a main nitrogen atmosphere. Cool. Okay. And then one last object, we've got this thing. CSG. This asteroid of a comet-like orbit has gained the attention of them uh, when it has discovered its unusual high density. When they arrived, the asteroid was shown to be entirely made of three metals, copper, silver, and gold. Hence its current name C for copper, S for silver, G for gold. It's unknown why the rock has such a weird composition. My guess is, complete theory, this was obviously made in a massive supernova somewhere and it's been slung and captured by the uh, nemesis. That's my guess. Thanks for reviewing my version of an alternative solar system. Hope you enjoyed and had a good rest of your day. So yeah, an alternate universe where the dinosaurs became intelligent. They stopped the asteroid and they've been reaching out into the stars with a lot more progress than we've made in, the, uh, in reality. Obviously, they've already made it out to the Red Dwarf, which is over a light year away, so... Yeah, big up the dinosaurs, man. They made some good progress. Plus, they found another species on Europa. No, very cool. Even we haven't done that yet. So, nice. I like it. And the cool... I like the picture as well. You can see the picture of the dinosaurs. So, that's the dinosaurs. And they're the aliens on Europa there. <laughs> I like that. That's quite good, actually. He's even made actual art. You can actually physically imagine what they look like there. 
the squid like species from Europa. Very cool. And I really like what he did to the earth with the um he actually made it so the earth looked like older. There's the uh full look of the there's the green Neptune. Look at that in the all its glory. That other gas giant's massive compared to Jupiter and Saturn. Look at that. There's the planet Pluto. There's Earth. So yeah, I really like the Earth with the custom No, the consonants. Look at that. That's so cool. I'd love to see someone attempt to make like a pan like a Pangea where you can actually connect Brazil with Africa, if that's even possible. That'd be really difficult to do, but I like it. That's really cool. See there's North America. Obviously you've got the Pacific Ocean still. That's what would be Australia connected with Antarctica. You can see what will become India. Because India hasn't crashed into um, Asia yet to create the Himalaya Mountains. So that is that there is India. Or what would become India. So if you look at all those old graphics of... Um, all those like concepts of what how the Earth became the way it was with the continents. You could, there's a lot... They always suggest that India started off from the south. Near at the coast of Madagascar here. And then it slammed into where China would be creating the Himalayan mountains. So effectively the Himalayas aren't there yet because India hasn't smashed into the land to create them. Like it, that's cool. And it's actually added that. I don't know if anyone, you know, anyone else pick up on that. That's really cool. Obviously look at Europe as well. Europe hasn't fully formed. I like it. That's really cool. Really, really cool. It must have taken a lot of work to do that. But yeah, custom earth. That's that is awesome. I really like that. There it is. Lovely. So yeah guys, if you enjoyed this alternate reality let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I really enjoy this. This one was really, really cool. Big point to that. I like it. So, yeah, again, a massive thank you to TextNet for this um, really cool idea. Actually, really, really enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, let us know what you think down below in the comments, everybody. If you like this video, which I really hope you do, because this one was great. Let's see if we go over 100 likes. Come on, people. TextNet made a really good job here. This is really, really awesome. So, there you are. And, yeah, that will send done, everybody. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.